The Super Mario franchise was first brought to life through video games, and that's probably the platform on which it will probably always be best known. But since their debut on the NES back in 1985, the Super Mario Brothers have appeared in numerous TV shows, comics, anime, movies, you name it. With the highly anticipated feature film, the Super Mario Brothers movie that has just been released, what better time to explore the different ways in which Mario and Luigi have been enjoyed in different media throughout the years. This is the evolution of Super Mario movies and TV. The very first film to be based on Super Mario was a 1986 Japanese anime called Super Mario Brothers, The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach. As you can tell by the title, its pilot closely mirrored the video game, but the anime was notable for a number of reasons. Firstly, not only was it the first Super Mario movie, but it was also one of the first two films to be based on a video game ever. The other was Running Boy. Star Soldier's Secret, based on the Star Soldier game series from developer Hudson Soft. Both films were released on the exact same date, July 20th, 1986. These were the earliest examples of isekai anime to take place in a virtual game world. Directed by Masami Hata and produced in part by Nintendo, The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach was only distributed in Japan. However, the full 61-minute adventure can now be viewed on YouTube in high resolution and with English subs. Ah, what a time to be alive. <laughs> Three years later, following the release of Super Mario Bros. 2 on the NES, an American TV show began to air. It was called The Super Mario Bros. Super Show and it ran from September 4th to December 1st, 1989, with 65 episodes in total. Each episode featured live action segments, as well as animated stories, starring Hall of Fame WWF wrestler Captain Lou Albano as Mario, and actor Danny Wells as Luigi. Special guests would also appear, either as themselves or as a character, and on Fridays, the animated sections would focus on The Legend of Zelda rather than Super Mario. Fun fact, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show had an unusual end credit sequence. The masterpiece of music known as Do the Mario has now been immortalized as a popular internet meme. Mario, take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. 1989 was also the year in which the Amada anime series, Super Mario Brothers, came out exclusively in Japan. The original video animations, licensed by Nintendo, were released on VHS and contained three episodes in which characters from the Super Mario franchise appeared in fairy tales. The three fairy tales were Snow White, Isunbashi, which is similar to the story of Tom Thumb in English folklore, and Mamataro, a popular Japanese hero whose name is often translated as Peach Boy. As with many other entries featured in the video, these gems from the past can now be enjoyed by a worldwide audience thanks to the wonders of YouTube. The Super Mario Brothers were also featured in some of the public safety videos that aired in Japan, like Super Mario's Fire Brigade from 1989. The 10 minute long fire safety announcement was animated by Toei Animation, the same company that now produces One Piece and was one of several such videos. Ikuzo! Another being Super Mario Traffic Safety, which was once considered a lost anime due to its rarity. One of the first Super Mario comics launched in 1990 and is still in production to this day. The Japanese Super Mario-kun is a manga written and illustrated by Yukio Sawada. The comic series written closely follows the plot lines of many Super Mario video games. It starts in Super Mario World and continues right up until Super Mario Odyssey. Fun fact, Yukio Sawada has also created courses for the Super Mario Maker video game, which were released on November 6, 2015, and rewarded players with a Super Mario-kun costume for completing them. 
After the third Super Mario Bros. game came out on the NES console, another American TV series launched on NBC television. It was an animated series titled The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, and just like the cartoon sections of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, it featured animations from Cy Young Animation Studio. The series ran from September 8th to December 1st, 1990, and had 26 episodes. Its plot was loosely based on the video game and featured episodes such as Seven Continents for Seven Koopas, where Koopalings, who were sent by different names on the show, invaded each of the seven continents. Walker Boone starred as the voice of Mario this time around, while actor and comedian Tony Rosato voiced Luigi. European TV audiences finally got a taste of Super Mario Mayhem between 1990 and 1991 thanks to the Super Mario Challenge. In the show, two guest children would perform challenges within the Super Mario games. Rounds included tasks such as completing a level in the fastest time or collecting the most gold coins on a level. If that sounds fun, how about an interactive anime where you use a telephone to answer questions such as what will hatch from Yoshi's egg? Super Mario World, Mario and Yoshi's Adventureland allowed Japanese fans to do just that, but only if they owned one of Bandai's Terabiku consoles, an obscure VHS game system released in 1988 that was shaped like a telephone. The 28-minute anime could be viewed using a normal VHS player too, and now, of course, on YouTube, just without the interactive element. When Super Mario World was released on the SNES in 1991 in North America, inevitably there was another animated series to accompany it. The voice actors who performed in The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 returned, with the notable exception of Toad's voice actor, since Toad does not appear in Super Mario World. Thirteen episodes were broadcast in the United States and in Italy up until 1992 though many episodes have since been re-released in various formats, and the series was recently picked up by streaming service Paramount+. Plus. You gotta love the memes that spawned from the show. Mama Luigi! Cool it, caterpillar breath! I'm not your... Mama? Mama Luigi? <laughs> Nintendo fanboys and gamers in their 20s or 30s will no doubt remember the Nintendo Power comics, but did you know that throughout 1992, those comics featured Super Mario Adventures, a series featuring characters from the Super Mario franchise that was loosely based on Super Mario World, the game. The adventures were also showcased in Koro Koro comics a year later. 1993 was a huge year for Super Mario Brothers, but not necessarily in a good way. It marked one of the rare occasions on which Nintendo and Disney have collaborated as Hollywood attempted to make its first-ever video game-based movie. Directed by husband and wife duo of Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel, Super Mario Bros. the movie was shot in New York City and North Carolina on a budget of $48 million, equivalent to around $78 million today. It starred Bob Hoskins as Mario Mario and John Leguizamo as Luigi Mario. And yes, the brother's last name really is Mario as Miyamoto confirmed at the Super Mario Bros. 30th Anniversary Festival in 2015. The movie's plot centers around the two Brooklyn plumbers who are transported to an alternate dimension known as the Mushroom Kingdom, which in the film was, strangely enough, dark and dystopian, while in the video games it was colorful and playful. Additionally, the movie featured a number of strange and unconventional plot elements, such as the inclusion of intelligent dinosaurs. Super Mario Bros. the movie was a disaster. Fans of the Mario franchise hated it, and the film made less than $39 million at the box office, a loss of almost $9 million compared to its budget. The film received heavy criticism for its storyline, characters, dialogue, and unfaithfulness to the games. However, it has since gained a cult following, and many people now appreciate its bizarre, offbeat approach to the source material. Miss Toad? Yes. Oil. <sighs> Lethal. Stupid. Uh. In 2021, IGN ranked Super Mario Brothers among the best worst movies ever made. Fun fact, many people on set found the husband and wife director team to be very difficult to work with. In a 2007 interview, Hoskins, who played Mario, said, The worst thing I ever did? 
Super Mario Brothers. It was a f nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. F nightmare. F idiots. Dennis Hopper, who played King Koopa, echoed those thoughts in 2008, saying, It was a nightmare. Very honestly, that movie, it was a husband and wife directing team who were both control freaks and wouldn't talk before they made decisions. In fact, directors Morton and Jankel were effectively blacklisted by Hollywood as a result of this movie and haven't worked on any major blockbusters since. Following the disastrous flop of the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie, Nintendo became increasingly wary of whom they licensed their intellectual property to. Still, plenty of Super Mario merchandise has been released over the years, from lunchboxes to t-shirts, magazines, candy, plush toys, and a whole lot more. Mario and Luigi have also appeared in numerous themed versions of popular games, such as Monopoly, Tac Dex, and Connect 4. Then there are the numerous Super Mario TV commercials that have aired, including the Got Milk advertisement from 1996. Oh, yeah. In 2001, a series of Nintendo gamebooks were published by Scholastic. The first of four was titled Super Mario Advance and was based on the Game Boy Advance game of the same name. As part of the You Decide on the Adventure series of gamebooks, readers could choose multiple paths throughout the story and could even find clues throughout that would lead to secrets in the game. In September 2020, Nintendo kicked off the Super Mario Bros. 35th anniversary event. It began with a Nintendo Direct, which announced many new upcoming games, as well as information surrounding Mario-themed merchandise, clothing, and in-game events. Among these was a new LEGO theme called LEGO Super Mario. Various Mario-branded clothing ranges at stores like Uniqlo and Levi, and a Super Mario 64 vinyl record album. In total, the event ran for over six months until it ended in March 2021. One of the major events to take place during the 35th anniversary was the opening of Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan. Hello! <laughs> Let's go! Despite being delayed by over a year because of COVID, the themed area had its grand opening March 18th, 2021. Guests enter the immersive area through a warp pipe from an entrance plaza and can then enjoy rides and attractions such as Yoshi's Adventure Ride and Mario Kart, Koopa's Challenge, the one-up factory where people can buy various Mario and Nintendo-related merchandise, and several costume character meet and greets where you can take a picture with Princess Peach, Toad, Mario, or Luigi. A Donkey Kong expansion has already been announced for 2024 and will feature a roller coaster, interactive experiences, themed merchandise, and food. Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood opened to the public on February 17th, 2023. It features many of the same attractions as the site in Japan, but notably, it does not have an interactive bob -omb kaboom room or the Yoshi's Adventure attraction. Two more Super Nintendo Worlds are currently under construction, one at Universal Studios in Singapore and the other at Universal's Epic Universe in Orlando. Both are set to open in 2025. 30 years after the infamous 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie, Nintendo and its beloved mascots are finally back in Hollywood to give it another go. On April 5th, 2023, Mario and Luigi appeared once again in theaters around the world in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Luckily, it went far better than last time. The fact that it's a computer animated film as opposed to live action and is produced by Illumination Studios gave it a far better shot. Since the release of the trailers, fans worldwide have been hyped to see Mario on the big screen, even though not everyone is a fan of Chris Pratt's voice acting as Mario. What is this place? An all-star cast includes Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach. Together, we are going to stop that monster. Jack Black as Bowser. But there's one problem. 
There's a human, has a mustache, just like you. Charlie Day is Luigi. Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with a hat with the letter of his first name on it? <laughs> Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. Do not touch that mushroom, you'll die! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that one's perfectly fine. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, and many more. Voting. What do you mean? That's what they came here for! Dancing packs! We love you, DK! The longtime voice actor for Mario, Charles Martinet, also features in a series of cameo roles. Too much? It's a perfect! Okay. Though why they didn't just cast him as Mario? Well, you'd have to ask Miyamoto. One thing's for sure, Universal Pictures and Illumination Studios have gone all out with the marketing to promote the movie. Promotional material to date includes a Mario plumbing commercial with a hotline you can actually call. Thank you for calling Super Mario Brothers Plumbing. It's me, Luigi. An immersive website to promote Mario and Luigi's plumbing business and many epic movie posters. As for the movie itself, it was released in regular formats as well as in IMAX 2D and 3D, meaning audiences can experience the Mushroom Kingdom in incredible detail. For those unable to catch it in theaters, though, a Netflix release is scheduled for the end of 2023. Early reviews of the film have been mixed, but mostly positive, with an apparent disconnect between official movie critics and gamers. On Rotten Tomatoes, for example, the critics' consensus stands at just over 50%, while the audience score is at 96% at the time of making this video. Meanwhile, on IMDb, the movie holds a score of 7.4. But let's be honest, if you go into the Super Mario Brothers movie hoping for a complex narrative, you've come to the wrong show. As with the games, the plot follows a very basic path, this time with Luigi being captured by Bowser's forces and Mario, Peach, Toad, and Donkey Kong teaming up to rescue him. Staying true to the series, the fun is found in the journey, as we not only meet familiar friends and foes, but get to experience the joys of Mario in an entirely new way. There are a ton of references to past games, including a Mario Kart section that takes place on Rainbow Road, power-ups like Cat Mario and the Ice Flower, as well as enemies and special items like Bonsai Bill and Rocket Barrels. It does a fantastic job of recapturing the look and feel that gamers and Mario fans are used to. Unlike past movie or TV adaptations, which strayed too far from the Mario formula that everybody loves. The movie will no doubt be a commercial success, and there are talks about future animated films based on Nintendo's intellectual properties. For instance, a Donkey Kong spin-off, with Seth Rogen returning in the lead role maybe in the pipeline. And there is interest in a Luigi's Mansion movie, with Charlie Day reprising his role as Luigi. Fun fact, there are lots of clever Easter eggs dotted throughout the movie that make it worthy of a second viewing. One example is when Mario and Luigi race through town towards their first plumbing gig and pass by an upscale French eatery named Chassou Canard. If you know your French, you'll know that it translates to duck hunt which is, of course, the title of another popular Nintendo game and a launch title for the NES in 1985. Finally, a movie that recaptures the fun and excitement of the Super Mario video games. What a good way to end this series. Speaking of which, in case you missed it, check out the five-part evolution of Super Mario games. Or, if you prefer Sonic the Hedgehog, I've covered those games too. Thanks for watching.